D, wait for it. Wait for it. Check out the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. This past spring, the Marvel Universe got a massive War of the Realms event from writer Jason Aaron. Malekith, the Dark Elf, was hopping from one of the Ten Realms to the next, sowing destruction wherever he landed. Finally, repercussions of his warmongering hit Earth, also known as Midgard, causing all kinds of terrible beasts and monsters to come sliding into our reality. All these planes of being were created when two forces collided in the yawning void at the beginning of time. From this collision, elves, giants, angels, and goblins, and men were born. Eventually, someone got the bright idea to set up the Congress of Worlds, a sort of united nation of the Ten Realms. Here is a crash course on all ten realms of the Marvel Universe. Asgard, Realm of the Asgardians. One of the most, if not the most, important seat of power within the universe, Asgard is the native home to the Asgardian people, a race of aliens so technologically advanced that the Norse people, the Vikings, gave them the status of all-powerful gods centuries ago. More importantly, Asgard is the native home of their legendary leaders, both good and bad, Odin, the Allfather, Thor, the God of Thunder, Loki, the god of mischief, Hela, the goddess of death, and Frigga, Odin's wife, the All-Mother. Frigga is made up of three parts, Frigga, Gaia, and Idun. Malekith wants to do away with these old rulers and usher in a new age of gods. Asgard is also the origin of the Bifrost, a rainbow-like bridge that can transport anyone to any realm in the universe. The great Heimdall, whose eyes can see all across the cosmos, is the keeper of the bridge. If rainbow bridges aren't your thing, you may want to check out Yggdrasil, the world tree, a botanical wonder that is filled with ancient magic tying together all ten realms. If one were to gaze into the tree's sap, they'd see all kinds of crazy visions. In fact, it's so magical that Dr. Strange once snuck into Asgard just to get a refill on his powers. Just make sure you're worthy before you attempt such a foolhardy thing, please. Midgard, Realm of the Earthlings. As it was mentioned before, Midgard is our reality, Earth. Not so exciting, right? Wrong. For some reason, plenty of trouble is always happening upon our puny little dimension, which helped Thor become the hero he is today. After displaying unbelievable arrogance, the Asgardian prince was stripped of his hammer and powers by Odin and exiled on Midgard, where he was to learn a little humility on Earth. Thor took up the alter ego Donald Blake. Odin later came to regret this decision, describing humans as the most arrogant fleas to ever infect the cosmos. Rude. Midgard is where Thor met Jane Foster, a human woman who would later go on to take up the mantle of God of Thunder herself. Earth was also where the Avengers were founded. Their first ever enemy, Loki. While Malekith finds the place tawdry, Midgard is not as puny as it seems at first glance. Alfheim, Realm of the Elves. Alfheim is like something out of a fairy tale, complete with enchanted forests, champagne springs, mermaid lagoons, candy farms, and flourishing gardens. The entire realm's population is made up of different kinds of elves, spice elves, ice elves, air elves, and sea elves. Together, all of these elves make up the light elves or bright elves, a general term for the peoples of Alfheim. A beautiful and color-filled realm of whimsy and near-endless happiness and bliss. Elfheim was devastated by Malekith, who murdered men, women, and children without discretion or remorse. Venaheim, Realm of the Veneer Home of the Old Gods, Venaheim is the realm of lush forests, crumbling ruins, deep valleys, and spire-like landmasses. The people of Venaheim, the Veneer, warred with the Asir, who considered themselves superior a millennia ago a conflict that was resolved when Odin married Frigga. Before a peace was reached, Frigga's father, Freyr, struck a deal with Surtur that would get the demon to inspire the Vanir to rise up against the Aesir. Venaheim is famous for producing Frigga and Heimdall. Jotunheim, Realm of the Giants The birthplace of Loki, Jotunheim is the land of giants. Like the elves of Elfheim, the giants also have several different varieties, ice, mountain, forest, storm, and more. Loki's biological father was the frost giant king, Laufey, who was slain by Odin. 
It should be noted that Laufey was not originally a frost giant when he first debuted in 1965, but a regular run-of-the-mill giant warrior. The Allfather took pity on the giant's now-abandoned child and took him to Asgard, raised the boy as his own. The god of mischief's penchant for treachery against his family is not unusual as the giants of Jotunheim often attempt to undermine Asgard. Jotunheim is also the realm in which Skadi discovered the winged horse known as Aragorn. Nedevalir, the Dark Fields, the Realm of the Dwarves. Nedevalir, home of the dwarves, is known as the greatest weapons forge in the universe. Throughout history, the great dwarven blacksmiths created iconic tools like Thor's hammer, Mjorn, and his axe, Stormbreaker. Ruled by King Eitri, the realm has an eons-old treaty with Elfheim and even took in elven refugees after an attack from Malekith. Even during such a trying time, the dwarves were hard at work in the forges, preparing for an upcoming war until Muspelheim attacked them. Thousands of years before the warlord Ulick tried to take over when he united all the rock troll clans, while he didn't care all that much for the dwarves, Odin and his forces protected Nedavellir because the Allfather knew that its forges were of great importance to the town realms. To show their gratitude, the dwarves gifted Odin with a fragment of Uru, an extremely rare, unbreakable, and unsurmountable metal mined from beneath the mountains of Nedavellir. Odin wasn't impressed until he trapped a planet-destroying storm inside of it. Bringing it back to the dwarves, he asked them to forge it. They weren't able to melt the Uru until they hooked a star and used its great heat to melt the metal and turned it into Mjorn. Svethelvine, the Dark World, the Dark Fairy Realm. Homeworld of the Dark Elves, Svethelvine is a place of haunted forests, black bogs, black mountains, and dark caves. In essence, it is the exact opposite of Elfheim and is ruled by Malekith the Accursed, a dreaded master of sorcery and sworn enemy of Asgard and the other realms. While Malekith was sentenced to an eternity in Nostrand prison by Odin himself, he broke free and returned home to find that his people had lost their way and allied themselves with Asgard. To punish them and their insolence, he murdered an entire village and threatened to kill any dark elf he found hiding among the other realms. Niflheim, Mist Home, Realm of the Dead. Niflheim is to Norse culture what the underworld in Hades was to ancient Greeks. Described as the land of the dead, or hell, Nivelheim is Queen Hela's domain, a frozen place where she rules over the deceased. Exerting a large amount of control over this world, Hela can shift hell's reality to whatever she wishes it to be, a place of trials, a bottomless pit of despair, or a royal palace. It is also separated into different sections of punishment, reward, or humdrum routine depending on how an individual lived their life. Despite a nasty reputation, Hela can be forgiving at times and once let Thor and Sif walk away scot-free after the God of Thunder offered to sacrifice himself in Sif's place. Niflheim is the place where the first frost giant, Ymir, originated. After centuries, the water flow into the well of life froze into the form of Ymir, the dreaded frost giant. Gaining substance from a magical cow, Ymir witnessed the arrival of Odin's father, Buri and would eventually be defeated by his three sons, Odin, Vil, and V. Muspelheim. Hell may be the Norse version of Judo-Christian hell, but Muspelheim is what most of us think of when we think of the underworld. All fire and brimstone, a literal land of flames. This realm is the birthplace of fire itself. It is ruled by Cinder, aka the Queen of Cinders, the daughter of the late fire giant, Surtur. Surtur gave each one of his children a test after they turned three years old. They'd be starved for 13 days and then brought into Inferno Hall, before being given the choice between a large pile of food or a cauldron of flames and screaming souls. Cinder was the first in thousands of children to pick the fire. Once she was grown, Cinder ordered an attack on Hell and also set Nidavir ablaze. This was mainly done on the orders of Malekith, who eventually forgot his place in front of the Fiery Queen, prompting her to state that the other realms have been quaking in fear at the mention of Muspelheim since before your dark elves ever crawled from your swamps. The hot folks in the realm are constantly praying for Ragnarok and the chance to burn the gods into a powdery ash. Heaven the Tenth Realm. 
In a great war a millennia ago, Odin and Frigga defeated Asgard from an army of beings known as angels. Their queen murdered the Asgardian heir, Aldrif, who was just an infant. The terrible loss allowed Odin's power to surge forth and wipe out the angels. With powerful anger, Odin also cut off heaven from the nine other realms, tearing it away from the world tree and hid it so well in another dimension that it would not even be part of Asgard's legends. Aldrif, as it turned out, was not murdered, but saved by one of the queen's handmaidens and raised to believe that she was an angel named Angela. When Thor and Loki learned about the existence of their long-lost sister, heaven was returned to our dimension. But Angela was cast out of the Tenth Realm. To add insult to injury, she then wanted nothing to do with Asgard. Hey nerds, if you like this video, go ahead and click that deep what icon and subscribe. And if you want to see more videos like this, join me every Tuesday where you can check out the list.